Good day, guys and girls. Are you having some steering wheel shake when you're braking? Perhaps you've got a bit of a grinding sound or a grinding feel coming through the brake pedal when you're braking and braking real hard. Well, stick around. We're gonna show you what the possible cause might be, what the fix is, and maybe even how to prevent it in the future on your Mach-E, your F-150, or any other EV vehicle on the market. So stay tuned. <laughs> Just that little bit of dragging and usually I would only get that if I was uh, just starting out in the morning or you know just coming home just getting into the vehicle basically it happened on like the first stop or two and then after that it would go away but I think because the rotor is just slightly warped it's not making contact in those patches that have maybe got a little bit of rust on it it's unable to basically rub off that rust and it's still making that little bit of a grinding noise so again we'll uh see what the dealership comes back with i'll try and do it down in the wheel well we're on a private road right now just hear that that little drag or that little grind in there and again that would only happen for like the first couple of stops I've been out on the road now for 20 minutes making multiple stops and it's still making that sound in the blue Mach E R2D2 again like first stop maybe two and uh, everything's good so we're gonna have the dealership take a look at it I know that there's warp rotors I know that the bill will not be cheap. I can do this work myself. You've seen me do this kind of work on my channel before, but I also want just everything covered under warranty. I don't want them coming back and saying, you know, oh, you did your own brakes. So therefore we're not covering all your, you know, suspension components or whatever else that you've been touching in there. I just don't want any of that issue associated with warranty. It's a five year warranty on here. Who knows, Ford could back away from the battery warranty for Christ's sake, you know? And I know they're gonna say something about the paint on the calipers and they'll probably try to blame that, you know? Even though I've done it on every single vehicle that I've owned with no issues. So we'll see what the dealership comes back with. And, uh, keep you updated so stay tuned we're at the big orange box store and that's not why i'm making this part of the video but i traveled about 60 kilometers and you can see that we still have some corrosion that's kind of built up on the rotors there the fronts they're nice and shiny but it feels like that's where the vibration's coming from. Now you can get vibration from the rears, 
but I don't know, it just, it feels like the vibration and the sound is coming from the front. But look at this back rotor. Like I said, that's after 60 kilometers of travel and it's still got a bunch of corrosion and crap all over it. Actually got a bit of a, bit of a scuff there, but I can't feel it. So I don't know, I'm gonna have them do the brake service on it and see what it is, but my gut feeling is, is that it's probably a warp rotor of some kind to be making that kind of reaction on the steering wheel, which is unfortunate because again, we were promised that basically uh, EV vehicles would be immune to brake changes pretty much. You know, you just do a little bit of maintenance on it, but I think that's the downfall. Could be wrong. We'll see what happens when we take it to the dealership, so stay tuned. Good day, guys and girls. So it's a few days later. We got the vehicle back from the dealership, and they did a resurfacing on all the rotors. It was part of the 48,000 kilometer service that was required, that was required to look at the brakes and do like a however many point check. We'll put the uh, link to the receipt down in the description here and in this video. I think everything turned out really well. They resurfaced the rotors or turned the rotors as they used to call it. I really should have gotten this video done when I uh, hadn't taken it through the car wash and let it sit overnight. But as you can see, like they've turned everything and there's no shake anymore in the steering. Everything is super, super smooth. It's really amazing what you kind of get used to when you drive it for so long. Like the change just comes on so subtle and you really don't get a chance to actually realize what's going on. Now I could see just by looking at the rotors that something was going on. I, everything is back to what I would call normal. When we pull up to a stoplight, it doesn't uh, drag and make as much noise it only takes like a couple of good stops and after that it's almost silent which is the way that uh, it's supposed to be but if you're having some of these issues you know maybe take it into the dealership and have them take a look at it so we're on a bit of a hill we're going to do a bit more of a panic stop here you can hear the brakes grab but there's no jittering in that steering wheel so you can hear the brakes bite in because we're going at such a speed that the uh, brakes built into the motors didn't have a chance to grab in. So that was pure brakes. And as you can see, there was no steering wheel shake or anything. I was hardly holding on to the steering wheel. So again, I think that the brakes have been fixed by the dealer. And I think they were actually the rear brakes that were probably doing the worst of it I would, would have suspected and would have bet that it was the front despite knowing what the rear brakes look like I would have still bet that it was the front brakes because I know from past experience that's where you get a lot of that uh, brake shutter and uh, steering wheel movement from warp rotors up in the front so the dealer did a good job by resurfacing or turning those rear rotors so thank you so we did the more panic stop the harder stop let's do a stop going down to nothing brakes grabbed in right at the last second there the rest of the braking was done by the motors through the regenerative braking you just heard that little bit of grab in the brakes there that's exactly what a mustang mach-e should sound like this is not a normal vehicle where it just has conventional braking. So you're gonna hear that little bit of grind on the very last second 
of the braking that's that's a normal sound you hear that in a normal car too you just you get used to it because it's using conventional brakes the entire braking process additionally if you're using a lot of regenerative braking and you're driving through rain and a little bit of rust you know kind of accumulates on those rotors then you've got to kind of grind through that or wear through that before you actually get down to a good braking surface so this is all what a mach -E should sound like no matter what anybody tells you um, the speed limit is not 60 here by the way I don't know what <laughs> my dash is telling you but anyways uh, that's what braking should sound like in a mach -E. And I'm quite happy now. So turning the rotors, resurfacing the rotors, giving it a brake service for my 48,000 kilometer an hour service was the right thing to do. Um, couldn't be happier. It kind of sucks that we had to do it, but I do get it. It's new technology. The braking system is not used as much as it is in a conventional car. So you're gonna get this. So very, very happy very very happy with both mach -E's. Darth Maul has been doing quite well aside from the high voltage battery junction box that we had to replace and it took two months that was Ford's problem not ours and unfortunately we were the ones that had to pay for that problem so all in all it's been a very good experience with this mach -E. and for the most part well no for for the entire part the dealerships have been taking care of us so thank you Ford so the one other thing I wanted to mention is just how smooth the car is running. It really is amazing what you get used to and what you get accustomed to when the changes come on as slow as they do. Just the fact that that rotor was just slightly warped or had a bunch of buildup on it, whatever the issue was, was causing it to actually drag within the brake pads and was actually contributing to a rougher ride I just didn't realize it because it was so minuscule like I said over such a long period I just didn't even notice it and now like everything is back to normal including the gauge it now realizes that this is an 80 kilometer hour road not a 60 kilometer hour road which was kind of weird but we caught it here on camera you saw it first here but uh yeah what you get accustomed to it's really really strange so the ride was already smooth enough in my opinion <laughs> being an ev being as quiet as it is as it is too and take it in for service they do their work on the brakes and it's even smoother so that was the one point i wanted to make the other point i wanted to make is the uh scheduled maintenance and the resurfacing was about $225 I think I'll put that picture of the receipt up again but uh, that $225 is the only money that I've spent on this vehicle for service in f almost 52,000 kilometers so I think that in itself is pretty impressive Really, the only thing I've done is I bought winter tires for it, if you want to include that. And I put washer fluid into it. That's it. That is it. That is just impressive. Especially considering that this is Ford's first attempt at an EV. So, we're going to call that a win, too. And that's all I wanted to do is just comment on that and say the cost of ownership for this EV is fantastic yes you pay more for the EV but I've got to drive 60 kilometers to and 60 kilometers from work every day so not only am I saving by having to pay I think I worked it out to a dollar 78 a day to drive that distance but now I'm not paying for brake fluid power steering fluid, uh, brake pads, brake rotors, you know, all this other stuff, coolant system stuff, you know, the stuff that you would get in a conventional vehicle. I'm not doing oil changes. It's just fantastic. So that's all I wanted to say about that. 
but again, if you're having some braking issues with your vehicle, take it in, let your dealership take a look at it. If it's under warranty, have it done at a certified service station that does Ford service and everything should be good. Well, guys and girls, I hope you enjoyed the video and got something out of it. Maybe it's something that you are dealing with or something that you might be dealing with and it'll help you out along the road. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. This is your source and your point for EV vehicles, anything Mach-E, and by extension, anything F-150 as the vehicles are quite close to each other. You can see in my case that because the EV doesn't use the brakes as much as a normal combustion vehicle that they need a little bit of extra care and attention. So make sure that you're following Ford's maintenance program and getting everything checked when you're supposed to. In my case, it was at the 48,000 kilometer interval and they took care of the brakes, turned the rotors or ground them down and everything is back to as it should be. And hopefully it'll last another, you know, 40, 50,000 kilometers or even more. I know that's maybe a little bit uh, presumptuous as we use a lot of salt and a lot of brine here in Ontario, Canada. And it is quite hard, not only on vehicles, but on brakes and all exposed parts. So again, I hope you got something out of this video. If you're looking for content on Mach-E's, F-150's, EV's, this is the place. If you're also looking for house maintenance, property maintenance, basically anything to do with your property, right? My vehicles, they're parked on my property, therefore they are part of my property and part of my purview for maintenance. So if you're looking for really anything once you get onto your property, this is the place. Now, we're not going to have the flashiest content. We're not going to have cool cutaways, 3D effects, but you're going to get a lot of good information here. You're going to get some jokes here and there, but basically you're just going to get a lot of good information and it's going to help out a lot of people. We've helped out a lot of people so far and that's our goal on this channel is to help out people, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're male, whether you're female, whether you choose not to say what gender you are, doesn't matter. We're here to help. And I firmly believe that with good information, maybe a special tool here or there, anyone, and I mean anyone, is capable of more than what they think. And that's the whole point of this channel, because you never know unless you bear. We'll see you on the next one, boys and girls. Mm -hmm.